All right, let's go to warmer locales here, right? Best of spring training. Let's go to the Grapefruit League. I want to go to there. Yankees, Orioles, New Yank, Josh Donaldson. Same bat, same swing. It's all deadly there in Sarasota. Deep and gone. His first home run is a member of the Yankees. That one ends in a, a three-all tie. Aaron Nola still working a few things out for the Phillies. It's early in spring training, and that's good news if you are a Philly fan because Vlad Guerrero Jr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He'll still punish mistakes. No. That one out to Frenchies in Clearwater, maybe beyond. I'm trying to remember the highway there. That might be 275. It's a little inside. But the Phillies win 3 2 as Vlad Guerrero Jr., his home run, not enough. Uh, Diamondbacks Angels <clears throat> shift things out to Cactus League play. I'll have to leave the yard now. Paper cut will still hurt now and again. That's an RBI single. Otani finishing one for two, had that run. Driven in. Also making his spring debut. Man, it is good to see that man back in the box. Mike Trout. It's good for us. We're not pitching. Trout goes, look at where he went down to get that. That was off his shoe tops. The single in the left. First game since May of last season for Trout. What'd he do? Two for two. Two singles. Halos over the Snakes. 12-5. All right, let's go back down to Florida. The World Series MVP. He's on the move, but he's not going that far. Staying in the division, in fact. Jorge Soler getting a three-year deal with the Marlins, good for $36 million. That includes opt-outs after the first two years. The Braves have now lost a lot of power in their lineup with Freddie Freeman and now Soler both gone. The latter had three homers in the World Series, helping Atlanta secure their first title since 1995. It's Jeremy Fowler with us now to talk Rams, uh, wasting absolutely yeah. no time making moves, especially on the offensive side, but maybe the biggest move on the defensive side is yet to come restructuring something uh, with this guy. Where are they with that? This man, you gotta pay this man. Whatever That's he wants what the to do. Rams are gonna do, whatever <laughs> that guy wants. But he's on the books. I'm told they've made progress on an Aaron Donald extension. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. You saw the Matthew Stafford contract. That lessens his salary cap. He had a $23 million cap. It gives him space to pay Aaron Donald. The Robert Woods trade saves them $10 million in salary which is big for this deal, too, because I'm told really it was a cash flow issue. You have to load up. You have to pay this guy, make him probably the highest defensive player in the NFL. That is the plan right now. They know they have to do that. And so, they, you know, they wanted to lessen some salary. And I, I was told this could move fairly quickly now that they've done these other moves. And so you could, you could see this guy with a new contract very soon. Okay, so he can flirt the idea of, ah, maybe I walk away as a Super Bowl champion. And then the Rams are saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. We'll do anything. Uh, to keep you. How about Cleveland making the biggest move literally dollar-wise and yeah. figuratively trading, of course, for Deshaun Watson, and you're saying they're not done. They're not done. They're trying to re-sign this guy, Jadavion mm -hmm. Clowney. They believe he's perfect for their system against a running game, violent player up front. So they've looked at the entire pass rush market. Zadarius so Smith, they even looked into Daniil Hunter, who was with the Minnesota Vikings. Maybe they could swing a trade. Ultimately, though, this is their guy. And so most people around the league I talk to see him as, you know, probably a 10 to 12 million dollar player per year but he's one of the best pass rushers left and the browns know they want to keep him he knows that so maybe that drives his price up a little bit they're trying to find that sweet spot typically Clowney has waited to sign you know cleveland's been pursuing this guy each of the last two off seasons got him on a one-year deal last year so they'd like to probably lock him up for multiple years if they can pair him with miles garrett for future years trying to find that sweet and scott back with you on sports center matt stafford he's gone full la my guy is in commercials now the football still his day job, and after getting a four-year extension good for $160 million with the Rams, acting is going to have to be the side hustle. Stafford spent his first 12 years in Detroit, loved every minute of it, but got something new that suits his life now, drew immediate success, and now will be 38 when this new deal expires. Life-changing. Now, while Stafford stays, Robert Woods is on the move. The 29-year-old wideout was traded to Tennessee in exchange for a 2023 sixth round pick and can likely become a number two option at 45 catches and four scores for the Rams who just signed Allen Robinson to a three year deal. All right, the files, they're in the computer. Yes. Only one man can hack the data mainframe to get them. It's Jeremy Fowler with us now to talk Rams, uh, wasting absolutely yeah. no time making moves, especially on the offensive side, but maybe the biggest move on the defensive side is yet to come restructuring something uh, with this guy. Where are they with that? This man, you got to pay this man. Whatever That's he wants what the to do. Rams are going to do, whatever <laughs> that guy wants. But he's on the books. I'm told they've made progress on an Aaron Donald extension. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. You saw the Matthew Stafford contract. That lessens his salary cap. He had a $23 million cap. It gives him space to pay Aaron Donald. The Robert Woods trade saves them $10 million in salary, 
which is big for this deal too, because I'm told really it was a cash flow issue. You have to load up, you have to pay this guy, make him probably the highest defensive player in the NFL. That is the plan right now. They know they have to do that. And so they, you know, they wanted to lessen some salary. And I, I was told this could move fairly quickly now that they've done these other moves. And so you could you could see this guy with a new contract very soon. Okay, so he can flirt the idea of ah, maybe I walk away as a Super Bowl champion, and then the Rams are saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. We'll do anything. Uh, to keep you. How about Cleveland making the biggest move literally dollar-wise and yeah. figuratively trading, of course, for Deshaun Watson, and you're saying they're not done. They're not done. They're trying to re-sign this guy, Jadavion mm -hmm. Clowney. They believe he's perfect for their system against a running game, violent player up front. So they've looked at the entire pass rush market. Zadarius Smith, they even looked into Daniil Hunter, who was with the Minnesota Vikings. Maybe they could swing a trade. Ultimately, though, this is their guy. And so most people around the league I talk to see him as, you know, probably a 10 to 12 million dollar player per year but he's one of the best pass rushers left and the Browns know they want to keep him he knows that so maybe that drives this price up a little bit they're trying to find that sweet spot typically Clowney has waited to sign you know Cleveland's been pursuing this guy each of the last two off seasons got him on a one-year deal last year so they'd like to probably lock him up for multiple years if they can pair him with Miles Garrett for future years trying to find that sweet spot with him also trying to, to find a division title the last time they won one was in 1989. Jeremy Fowler joining us this morning on SportsCenter. Jeremy, thanks. Thanks, Gary. All right, look at the star power in this one down in Charlotte. LaMelo Ball hosting Luka Doncic and the Mavs in the first quarter. Mavs sort of sleepwalking out of the gate, down 22 to 9. Luka, step back triple. Going to go ahead and cut into that. 10 point deficit. Luka, same spot, same result. Seven point lead for the Hornets. Fifth road game, though, in eight nights. For the Mavs, second night of a back-to-back, -back, maybe some tired legs. So Luca's just going to go ahead and hand it off. You think he wants to tangle with a double team of bees? No. He saw how it turned out for Thomas J. And my girl, you don't want to tangle with bees. Go there Is that too soon? I added. He needs his glasses. Feels far. Luca. <laughs> so is Thomas J. Another three. He had 37 points. This is awful. Mavs are down five. Lamelo ball. <clears throat> Wing three. No one else has wings. Bees. Lamelo <laughs> drive finding P.J. Washington. He had a season high 21. Jason Kidd, your Mavs head coach, acknowledged some slippage on the defensive end for his uh, his basketball club. And yeah, Miles Bridges in amongst the trees, a Euro step. His 37th 20-point game of the season. He wow. had 24 in his first three seasons combined. He was so hot, that buzzer beater went. Mavs fall to the Hornets. 129 to 108. Dubious distinction here for Luka. He went for 37, but there's a 30 for 30 feel because what if I told you He's the second player this season to have 30 points, but a plus minus of minus 30 or worse. Wow. Dubious distinction, but illustrious company because LeBron James is the other player to do it. You unlocked a core memory for me right there, Randy, and I do not like it. <laughs> hey, what's the difference between a uh, tiger and a wildcat? Merely it's a tuition. Uh, number 11, Princeton versus number six, Kentucky. Six minutes left in the fourth. Princeton with a five point lead. This right here is Abby Myers driving baseline under the hoop. Easy finish. Kiss off the glass. That's good. Princeton up 59 to 52. So you saw Abby do work near the cup. How would you like a little downtown, Abby? Okay. She'll scratch that itch. 29 points uh, for Myers as Princeton was up now at eight at this point. Robin Benton, though, trying to get Kentucky back into this thing with the corner three. Kentucky now down five. Myers, that's a miss. So the Wildcats in transition. Here we go. Let's push the court. Never mind. We got cookies on the court. The turnover, crucial. So Kentucky now forced to foul, sending Princeton to the line. They go on to win, does Princeton, 69 to 62 as they advance to the second round. Would we have an upset of second-ranked UConn and Paige Beckers and company in the Bridgeport region? Uh, no. 15 seed Mercer got all it could handle. A little generous with the basketball as well. UConn would force 13 turnovers in the first half. Those turnovers leading to 17 points for the Huskies to the tune of a 20-point lead at the break, 43-23. Paige Beckers, though, 24 minutes, most for her since the knee injury in December. A year of steal, a couple of her 12 points. She's still rounding into basketball shape, but, I mean, goodness, UConn just rolling. Caroline Ducharme to Kristen Williams. Caroline, 13 points for Williams. UConn by 45, 83 to 38. You look ahead here at this Bridgeport 
region. 28th straight win for UConn in NCAA tournament openers and it breaks the tie with Tennessee for the longest run in D1 history. The average margin of victory during that run for UConn, 48 points. So now the Huskies move on. They get seventh seed UCF in the second round on Monday, 9 Eastern on ESPN. Far from Delton College basketball, Gonzaga was hoping to zig where Baylor zagged. How a one seed needed a furious second half rally to survive. That was the good. It's time now for the best. Saturday's best, and we got a plethora of offerings. How about the best miss? Wait, what? Can that be a thing? It can. St. Peter's, Murray State. This is Daryl Banks the third chasing things down, and Daryl Banks the third, almost Daryl Banks the triple. Bank didn't need it. Banks almost had it. Didn't need it, though. St. Peter's.